Hello, I would like to demonstrate mole design in Cinetron version 13. Let's begin by going to the mold setup wizard and we will give it a job name here. And we're going to create a new parting assembly. Uh, we're going to select an existing layout. And we're going to create mold assemblies. We're going to work in inches. And we want to set the working folder. So we'll just put this under uh, Symmetron Documents. And so what this does is it sets up the um, assembly structure for mold design. And we're going to add some work parts. And if we want to apply a shrink at this time, we can, or it can be done later. And we could also change the um, orientation of the part if it came in out of uh, draw. We could edit the work forming system and put it in the proper draw direction. Now, I do want to spin these parts, and that's controlled here in the layout part. So the sketch controls the distance uh, apart and the angle. And the layout UCS controls the, the um, rotation and the height. We're going to make this one 270 and this one 90. And that will rotate the parts. Next, we're going to activate one of these parts and hide the other one. And we're going to go into quick split. And when I Click on Start Analysis. It's going to run out uh, selecting neighboring faces that meet this condition. I call this the stop condition. So at minus 0.1, we would expect that all the vertical faces would be included in that selection. And let's choose the name as Cavity. Start Analysis. Okay, and then we're going to do small check. Flip the arrow over and change the name to core. We're going to ignore what's already been selected. That way the vertical faces are reassigned to this group. Pick one face, start analysis. And now if we animate the opening direction, we can see what's left behind. And this will happen if you have undercuts or um, surfaces that require some kind of action in the mold. However, these ones were left behind for a different reason, and we're going to look at it to see why. So Quick Split gives us these groups uh, quickly and easily, and can easily turn off one side. And so now, if I zoom in, we kind of animate this, we can get a feel for if that belongs on this side. Obviously it does not, or else it would be trapped. So we'll turn that side off and turn this side back on. Do the same thing. And here we can kind of see that that makes sense belonging on this half of the tool. So I'm going to select it and attach it to that group. And now if we go to the draft angle analysis, we can understand why those uh, faces were not automatically attached. The draft angle analysis 
gives us colors according to ranges. And so anything that's red is going to be undercut. But if I let the mouse hover over that area, I can see that that's minus three degrees. So it's just an improper draft direction uh, from the part designer. And again, anywhere else that I click on, I can drop flags so we can see what kind of angle conditions we have. Uh, obviously, these ones are horizontal areas at 90 degrees. So it's a good way to get familiar with the part. You can see we got a little, little bit of draft here, not much. All right. Okay, so now uh, we're ready to start uh, building internal shutoffs. And to do so, I think we'll work with the other half. So we'll turn the core side on, cavity side off. And we've got all these internal areas to close up. So fortunately, Cinetron has some great tools for that. And the first one we're going to look at is faces, cap, internal islands. So I'm just going to pick all these faces. And the software uh, identifies the regions that it understands that need to be closed up with the uh, purple boundaries. Um, this one I want included, so I just select it. This one I want excluded. So I select it again to unselect it. And we're going to ask for these to all be done automatically. Okay, and all those areas were closed up. There's a little bit of knowledge being used here and how to close this one up. And this one that we left alone, we're going to work with on the other half. So we turn off the core, turn on the cavity and the logic resides on this side for how it's to be closed up. So we'll do the same thing again. I'll just pick that one surface this time and that one gets closed up. Now that just leaves us these two areas here. So there's not quite enough information yet to close this up. We need to help it along a little bit. So we're going to do a blend in two places here. And with that little bit of help, the knowledge is now there to close this up. So we do it again. Faces, cap internal islands. You'll notice I can't pick these because I'm currently set to a single object. If I change that to multiple objects, I can now include those surfaces. And everything is there that we need, and it's closed up. So now we want to mirror that across to the side. Probably I could use a plane on center, uh, but just in case there's some small discrepancies in the model, we're going to use a mid plane. So we go to plane, mid plane. We bump this wall, and we bump this wall to get a plane dead center in between. And now we're going to do edit, copy, mirror. We're going to set our filter to work with faces. And when I pick one brown face, I can then set this filter to select other brown faces and easily select those areas. Okay, so that takes care of all the internal stuff. Now we just have the external. And to do that, I'm going to use a composite curve. So we're going to do a composite curve there. Another one here. Another one there. Backside. Okay, and then we're going to sweep this back one out uh, by reference to 
that page. Actually, let's not do that one. Let's do parting surface. External. And so what this is doing is trying to give us as flat of a shutoff base as possible um, according to being perpendicular to this vector. So that's going to be a nice relatively flat parting surface for a good steel condition. Same thing over here. <clears throat> And then we'll go to the top view. And then we'll do a sweep of that to a reference. And then just close these off with a blend. Notice that my blend has a coincident point at one end, and it's very forgiving, it doesn't mind. Over here, I've got a little bit of overlap, and we can see that that surface is protruding below that surface, so we're going to trim this guy to that guy, trimming both. And this guy to that guy, trimming both. Go back to the top view and we'll trim all these against that plane. Okay. And so that gives us all the external parting faces. And now we just need to go back in the quick split and assign the parting attributes, letting the software know that all of these surfaces are shutting off between this group and this group. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to stop the video here and then we'll do another one adding the mold base.